Welcome back, friends, to the Cadaver Club. I'm Ben. I'm gonna do my first movie review, guys. The first movie I'm gonna review, you guessed it, mm, Castle Freak. I love this movie when it first came out, guys. I love this movie so much that I had a fucking Castle Freak t-shirt made in the mid-90s. That was a lot of work, guys. You had to like physically purchase a Fangoria over here and then cut out all the pictures and then drive across town and give it to this dude who was going to work his uh, mid-90s Commodore 64 magic on that shit and transplant it on a shirt. But it was worth it. You know why? Because then I had a Castle Freak shirt. Anyway, let me get back to this review. Castle Freak is a 1995 uh, straight to video Stuart Gordon classic stars Jeffrey Combs and uh, Barbara Crampton so uh, reanimator reunion and uh, it's really I really like it so it is I might get into some spoilery stuff but I'll warn you I mean I don't know how much you can really spoil this movie it's like spoiler alert it's about a freak double spoiler alert that bitch straight lives in a castle, son. But I'll, uh, I'll warn you if I get into any spoilers. So the general synopsis is uh, an old lady dies in a castle. Uh, Jeffrey Combs is her relative in America. Um, and so he goes overseas to the, uh, visit the estate and he's gonna live in the castle while they liquidate it. And he goes with his wife and uh, his daughter um, and they move into the castle, but Little do they know, the castle has an inhabitant. That inhabitant, he's a freak. So, right off the bat, uh, this movie is played super straight. There's nothing cheesy or campy about it. Um, the It's very atmospheric. They filmed it in a castle, um, and it looks great, and the cinematography is good, and uh, the makeup effects are awesome. Um, the Castle Freak is like a full body makeup uh, and it looks really good. Uh, the gore is good and um, yeah, I'd say definitely check this out if you haven't seen it yet. Um, and if you've seen it already, watch that shit again, it's good. So it is kind of like a you know, creature feature but kind of in the tradition of Frankenstein, the Castle Freak is a... Uh, sympathetic monster because um, he was created so he's not like inherently evil he's was uh, thrown in a dungeon and uh, beat and turned into a freak um, so when he gets out he's not just like straight evil looking to murder people um, but the shit does happen so I'm just gonna get into some spoilery talk um, so what I really like about this movie is that it is super played straight. Um, it takes itself seriously, but at the same time, it is fucking hilarious because, like, it's just absurd. It's like, uh, it's so absurd. I mean, we're supposed to believe that, like, this old lady dies, and uh, by the time someone, like, discovers her body, and contacts Jeffrey Combe, her next of kin in America, and then he makes plans to go check out the estate overseas, and then he gets there. During all that time, how many days or weeks or months is that? I don't know. But Castle Freak, he hasn't had any food or water. I mean, he would be dead. But he's fine. You know why? Cause that bitch had like some secret agent training. That guy's like a uh, Green Beret and shit. Um, he basically eats a cat and he gets reinvigorated and he bites his thumb off and he escapes his shackles and then he is free to run the castle. Um, so the family relationship is pretty heavy too because they used to be a family of four but uh, Jeffrey Combs character was uh, driving drunk and with his daughter and their young son, I think their son was five, and um, had an accident and the son dies. And then the daughter, she becomes blinded from the accident. Uh, kind of pretty heavy duty. I mean, the loss of a child and, I don't know, blindness. Um, and so that has obviously put a lot of strain onto the um, relationship between Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton. Um, 
and so yeah that whole dynamic it's like they're just not able to connect in the same way she clearly blames him as you know i mean it was his fault he was driving drunk killed his son it's garbage um but yeah so they uh are somewhat estranged from each other and uh, Jeffrey Combs goes into town to the bar and uh, finds a local prostitute and brings her back and uh, Giorgio at this point Giorgio is the castle freak that's his name at this point is uh, roaming free the castle and um, Jeffrey Combs you know he sort of falls off the wagon he had been sober and trying to be good and all that stuff but uh, he gets drunk on the wine that he finds in this wine cellar and uh, with the prostitute and so the castle freak is sort of voyeur checking them out I mean he he's been locked up in a dungeon since he was like a youngster so he's never seen anything like this so basically Jeffrey Combs has a little bit of oral sex and then sort of passes out um, and uh, the castle freak was like, oh, well, that looked interesting, you know, I've been cooped up a while, maybe I'd like to get some uh, action with this uh, nice looking lady. Um, and she, so he basically uh, finds her before she leaves and corners her. Giorgio is fine, he's trying to like romance this chick, you know, he's just like, this is like, a, oh, look, I just saw this dude do it, so I'm going to, I'm going to act out, but he can't speak, and uh, obviously hideously disfigured, I mean, he is hideous, hungry, and loose, so it's not until she freaks out that he sort of reacts, and then, uh, yeah, he just like lashes out, so uh, he kills her, and um, the police start investigating everything. Uh, I don't want to get into the whole plot here, guys, breakdown, but um, I will just say that uh, as it turns out, so here's like straight spoiler stuff, uh, Giorgio is actually Jeffrey Combs' half-brother, um, and the reason he was in the dungeon was because uh, his mother uh, and father split his father split to go to America and left the mom and the mom was like real upset about it and blamed Giorgio and so she locked him in the dungeon and he became her whipping boy and then um, yeah so they're relatives now let me tell you why this movie is so awesome so the castle freak uh, he's like he's like a fucking super freak he's super freaky I mean, he's been locked up this whole time, but he must have been doing, like, dungeon Pilates or something, because, like, at one point, Jeffrey Combs is, like, uh, hears a noise, and he's, like, ex like going through the room, looking, trying to figure out what it is, um, and he walks through this room, and it's got sheets all over the furniture, and, uh, and then you see, like, the castle freak's been sitting in the chair pose the whole time, with a sheet over him, I mean, that guy has some quads, um, and then another point, he's like straight Mission Impossible up in the chimney and shit, like hanging out in the pools, like a big dude up into the chimney. So, I mean, that guy is, I don't know, that guy's been doing some P90X all up in there and shit. But, um, and then another point, he jumps through a plate glass window on the second story and lands in like the superhero pose. I mean, this guy is like heavily disfigured. He's missing a thumb, so. He bit his thumb off. I mean, he hasn't dressed his wound or anything. He's lost how much blood? I don't know. Anyway, it's absurd. And that's what sort of fu is funny to me about it. Uh, because he's like, he's like a fucking superhero. Um, so anyway, uh, in conclusion, yes, check it out. This movie was great. It's atmospheric. It's creepy. Um, and you should definitely watch it. Uh, yeah, Stuart Gordon's Castle Freak. So there you go, guys. I don't know. That was my first review. I'm sure they'll get better. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me in the comments below, have you seen Castle Freak? What did you think of it? Um, yeah, I want to know. Uh, and if you haven't seen Castle Freak, go watch it. And then get back to me and tell me what you thought of it. Alright, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, goodbye.